Hi everybody and welcome to this Friday's tutorial and I want to discuss with you uh, the capturing of light. So I've taken this beautiful lady from Pixabay because of that beautiful light and I started making several studies of this lady in charcoal and in uh, on cheap paper and on better paper and so on. But what I'm on, my main and only concern of this study is to capture that light. Now here you see another study and sadly my crayons uh, contained little pebbles. So, well, this drawing is ruined. But it is still a perfect study and you can see me uh, still searching for that light <coughs> on the pastel mat by Claire Fontaine. So, part three. Uh, this is what I did for this study. And I recommend you to make more than one studies. So this is actually my, I think, uh, fifth try to capture that light. And what I did is I taken some Pampastel and some crayons and I simply rubbed on a lot of pigments as an underlayer. Now on my Patreon page there is a, a, f a full two hour uh, one on one tutorial on this where you can actually uh, hear and see me sweating as I draw and talk in the same time. Then for drawing material. Once you have your layer standing there, you can choose natural charcoal, charcoal pencils, pastel pencils, and of course some brushes. Okay, chapter four, our first steps towards uh, putting a face on the paper and on the underlayment that we have put in. Now, if you are a beginning artist, then it is very wise to draw one on one qua uh, size. So then you can actually train your brains and eyes to get the proportions and all the well, marks on about the right place. Now, likeness is not my first concern in this drawing at all. It is the light that I want to capture. And I want to get a feel of 3D going on. That is very, very important to practice. And uh, to create likeness, likeness is, is not that important at all. But here I am purely using natural charcoal and I'm simply trying to capture the contours and where the dress is going to be and here you can see that beautiful line of the neck this is the tip of the chin and I can literally see where the neck is coming from from what point so this is a very um, easy way to get a face going on on your drawing sheet. I also uh, try to decide where uh, the line is between what is hair and what is face. And by using the natural charcoal, I can also already place in the darker areas that are darker of value. So that's in the dress itself and her hair is darker. But of course I also have those light points on uh, the hair where the light is shining upon that hair. 
Here I can see the cheek line where it's going to be. And I also want to point out where the nose is going to be, the mouth and the eyes of course. Now I check the earlobe and I see that the nose is a little bit lower than the earlobe. Now I know where the mouth is going to be and this is where about the eyes are going to be. So I'm simply put, uh, pointing out some landmarks without going into detail. The details I save to the very last but at this stage I merely want to point out where the shadows and the darker areas are going to be, uh, the line of the hair and um, well actually that's it and then well I simply rub it all in and that's it. Then we get to the next stage. Now I'm going to be a little bit more precise on where I want the, well, the details to come into the drawing. For this I've chosen a very light brownish pastel pencil. It is a kind of burnt umber, but uh, the lighter version of it. And I chose this because it has a little bit of color in it and I kind of get a blueprint uh, because I rubbed my natural charcoal out. But the sketch is still visible and what I can do now is I can put in the light. And for drawing in the light I am using a uh, pink pastel pencil, the brightest one I had around. So I simply start pointing out those areas that are hit by the light. Now in this case the light is coming from the left side of course, but there's also a casted light on the right side of the face. And then I rub it in again. Now we're off to the next stage. In this case I've picked up a, well, a very light blue grey pastel pencil which is even lighter than the light pink that we used in the former stage. With this light grey I put a second layer of light onto this marble. By doing this I'm creating a very soft feel but I also want to point out the highlights on this portrait and in this way I want to create a feel of 3D. Here you can see the left side of the face which is light up very brightly. Now we get to the dangerous stage of our drawing and that is putting in the darkest darks. For these shadow parts I'm using a very dark grey with a lot of blue in it. I think that dark blue is a perfect underlayer for the shadow parts. Blue is a, a cool color, it's cold of feel and in that way by using that blue 
I'm creating a feel of depth and also 3D and I can softly rub it in and I'm also using it of course here on the back of the neck in the hair themselves and well it's kind of like uh, you can touch it and also I use it in the the dress itself she has some kind of color going on there and here I'm picking up the light pink again so I can point out um, the area of what is skin and what is dress so I have to make uh, sure that that is obvious and then I'm simply going to point out also where the eyebrows are going to be and the darkest shadows next to the nose and what you can also see is that the difference between the very brightened up left side of the cheek right next to that is a very dark area now this is the area of my interest because this is where the contrast between the darkest darks and the lightest lights are the biggest so that is a very very nice element and that is exactly why I chose this model to help me to do this light study because that is the only thing that I want to capture and that is that exciting light that is on the side of her head now I wasn't happy with the placement of the right eye so I simply blurred it out and that is the beauty part of drawing with pastel pencils just like a painter you can go over and over it and simply replace an area if you're not happy with it so I'm using that light gray again to uh, brighten up the right side of the uh, face and I'm replacing my eye here so I go back in with the light umber and then I simply go over it with the dark gray so this is how easily and quickly you can replace an eye if it's uh, not in the place that you wanted it to be by putting in lights into the eyes your portrait will get a soul so your portrait will become alive if you want by simply putting in some white dots okay so we have taken a lot of time preparing putting in layers putting in a first catchy natural charcoal and then uh, placing in the lightest lights and the darkest darks and once you think okay everything is quite in place and then and only then it is time for the last detail I'm simply putting in some highlights and maybe I want to put in a little bit of color like uh, the darker brown because I'm imagining for instance that her hair is uh, brown so in that way I can uh, create a feel of well sort of hyper realism if you want but I do not want to put in too much color just the suggestion of color I think that's a nice detail and even though I've taken this drawing to become um, well in parts uh, 
I can still work on this drawing for many more hours. But I just wanted to be uh, studying this portrait for two hours because I've already done a lot of more uh, studies of this beautiful lady. But it's very important to keep those details to the very, very last. For instance, this is the hair that is popping upwards, like it's bouncing around and it's capturing a little bit of that highlight. Also, I want to place in, for instance, some extra dark shadows here in the dress. Now, this brings uh, a little bit extra contrast and gives your drawing a very convincing feel. Just those last details that will help you. And you can even decide to draw in that necklace that you see there. To make it as fragile as possible. I wanted to be this uh, portrait to be about the light and about the softness. So that I managed. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you are picking up and learning something from it. And if you do, please give this tutorial a big thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And maybe I will even see you around on my Patreon page. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next Friday.